Hi, I'm Geert van Gielen and I want to talk to you about how to choose a recorder as an advanced player. This video is part of a series that accompany the iBook Thoughts on the Recorder that is available through my webshop kattenberg.net. You can find the link in the description. I have also included a clickable link at the end of this video if you want to learn more about it. As mentioned in video 1, I consider you to be an advanced player if you have been playing for a number of years and are able to play the great recorder sonatas without much difficulty. Welcome to level 2. You probably find your first instrument not sounding too good anymore, with some hissy sounds accompanying your playing. Maybe some high notes are not responding too good anymore. In short, you are not happy with your instrument. If your sound production has evolved well and you have good control over the instrument, you may very well be in the market for a new instrument. You can go two ways now. First of all, you can replace your current recorder with a new factory-made instrument. Or you can decide to buy a handmade instrument. I would strongly suggest to first of all stick with a high-pitched instrument, with which I mean piano tuning. A440 or here in Europe A442. This because the majority of musicians play at this pitch. With this in mind, I would suggest to stick to a factory built instrument. I would also stay away from the price range of the handmade instruments, which at times get scary close to the higher range of factory made instruments. Again, just as I advocated in the previous video one on instruments of level one, I suggest to stay away from instruments made from hardwoods like grenadille, ebony, palisander, and this for e ecological reasons. I think it would be a good idea to supplement your high-pitched factory instruments with a hand-built low-pitched one. These instruments possess so much more in quality than their factory counterparts. The possibilities in terms of sound coloring and dynamics are so dramatically different that it will take your overall musical, musical experience to a whole new level. They are truly a different beast, as I would like to demonstrate by comparing two altos. First, a high-pitched factory-made boxwood one, and next, a handmade low-pitched boxwood. High-pitched. <laughs> Low pitched boxwood. Another low pitched boxwood. And one more time, the high pitched. I'll give you one more time this boxwood, low pitched. Good low-pitched instruments are always handmade. I advise against buying a factory-made low-pitched recorder because the difference with a high-pitched one will be too small. When you find yourself in the market for handmade low-pitched instrument, consider yourself to go on a personal journey. You will want to take the time to learn about differences in sound. You will also want to take the time to distinguish between different builders. It's going to be a process that, by the process alone, will enrich you as a musician. Your first step could be a visit to a recorder builder in your vicinity. Second, you should visit as many recorder friends as possible who own handmade recorders. Revisit these people 
so you can give yourself the time to form a second opinion. Also, try to find a reference recorder, a recorder which speaks to you more than any other and to which you can compare other instruments by regularly revisiting this instrument. Ask the owner what they like about the instrument, what do they look for themselves in a handmade recorder? How was or is their relationship with the builder? Would they, buy, would they buy from the same builder again? Also, while playing the instrument, do they have to watch out for certain things like tuning on certain notes, etc. Next, you will want to go on an instrument exhibition where a lot of builders are together and try out the different instruments. Trying to find a separate room away from the noisy crowd. This is not too much of a luxury. Also, try and find a room that's kind of neutral in acoustics, not too dead and certainly not too reverberate. Let me give you an example of a couple of handmade instruments that you could run into during such an exhibition. Try to determine the differences in sound between these two instruments. As a point of reference, I will compare these again to a factory-made instrument. One thing you should realize is that once you have decided on which instrument to buy, that you might be facing multiple years of waiting before you can call yourself the owner. This is why it might be a good idea to purchase a handmade one during an exhibition, since there may very well be multiple instruments available to buy on the spot. One more thought. You may want to stay away from instruments that are too demanding in terms of sound production. Some instruments may sound beautiful to you, but are quite difficult to play in order to get a good sound going. On the other hand, some instruments may have some notes that speak really difficultly or possess some challenges tuning-wise. Such instruments may soon become quite frustrating as you try to cope with the instrument and not succeed. In order to completely have a trouble-free experience, I advise for this level to stick to instruments that are quite safe in this respect. Good luck with your new purchase! That's all for now. If you follow the link, you can watch the next video on how to choose a recorder when you are on the third level as a pre-professional or professional player. Bye.